Welcome, everybody. I am so honored. We, Michelle and I both are so honored to, to be here with you guys this, this morning. Uh, Gabriel, it's been, been a while, but Gabriel, I know we have done several um, sessions with you guys over the last several years with Young Wings, and I'm so excited about all of that. We love the the place of of being able to speak into and and share with you know part of the part of our ministry and part of our focus is that of the body coming together as one. There's a prayer that is said every morning in uh, to to any Jewish person. There's a prayer that is said every single morning, and that's the Shema. And it goes, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kovod Machuto Laolam Vaed, Vaahavta Eit Adonai Elohecha, Bechol Lavavka, Ubechol Nefshecha, Ubechol Meodecha. And it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is your glorious kingdom forever and ever. And you will love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And I love that part. It actually goes on a little bit more than that, but that's the part where the Father has told me to, to pray to, mainly because of this place of, of crying out every single day, that, that my heart, every part, every fiber of my being, every part of me says, Lord, I want to love you with all of my heart, my soul, and my strength. In every situation, difficult or not, Glorious or not, I want to I want to give you everything that I have on the inside of me. Now, those of you that came, you saw that that I wanted to talk today about I am that I am. There's a there's some things that I've taught, and and if if you remember from when I came here the last time, uh, I brought these these things up, and I want to bring them up again because to me they are foundational for the perspective of what Father has given has given us in this, but not only that, but what he, it, for each one of us when it comes to this. And there's there was two questions that he gave me early on. Uh, the Lord had spoken to me about the word perspective, and then he began to give me two questions that helped me to be able to look at how I understand something. And those two questions, for those of you that know me well, have heard them a thousand times if you heard them once. And those two, two questions are, what do you see? And how do you see it? Well, what do you see speaks about the place of perspective. You know, sometimes when we're looking at something, we're looking at something and and we, we immediately go to a judgment of exactly what we think it is. The Lord's been rattling me about just that. How do I really see something? Or what is it that I'm really seeing? Because in that place of perspective, it helps me to determine how I'm seeing it. Because how do you see it fits into the place of intention. Because how I see it is the very place of what's going to be inside of my heart. And what's in my heart is what's going to come out of my mouth. And those things that I'm going to do. You following me? So what do you see? Perspective. How do you see it? Intention. And they have changed me. Because it it really began to force me to stop and think about. I remember, let me just give you an example. So that's that's it, just a kind of a reminder example. I remember years ago when the when the Lord began to, to show me this and the questions came up about what do you see and how do you see it? I began to realize that there were times that I would blame the devil for things or curse the devil for things that the Lord was walking me through and allowing me to see another side of something. He was teaching me something in it. And I would blame the devil because I was like, well, devil, you're obviously coming against me and blah, blah, blah. I curse the devil. And the Lord was saying, no, 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 no. I want to show you something. I want to show you that, that you have more strength than you realize you do. You have a you have something hidden in the inside of you that you don't realize that you have. So when I began to see that, and I began to recognize that sometimes difficulties weren't really difficulties after all. They were treasure hunts, and it changed everything. It's a lot more to that, but I, I, I to just to continue on with what the Lord's want me to talk about today. But I remember as Father began to walk me through this, when Moses was... Um, had come, had had gone, it was right there at the burning bush. 
And uh, by the way, I, I, I hear Holy Spirit just saying to, to stop for just a second. Father, we bless you. We yes. thank you. We praise you, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your expression. Father, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here in the midst of, of all of this. You are the great teacher. And that, that, that Father, I recognize and, and honor the place that I am sitting in a place where, we, where I am a teacher amongst teachers, amongst great teachers. And I'm a son amongst sons. And I'm a king amongst kings here. Father, we are all equal. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad that we are one in you, Father. And from that place, as Lord, we begin to uh, to begin to teach and to begin to engage with one another, that Father, that, that there is a sharing of the treasure that's on the inside of us. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that as you carry me, carry me through this part that I want to talk about today, Lord, that, uh, that the ears would be opened and eyes would be opened and the hearts would be open to the understanding of how you are speaking to each and every one of us. Lord, I recognize that we may see things a little bit differently, but that's okay. That's exactly what you intended. You intended for us to be able to, to see things a little bit differently There's, because then together we can see the whole picture. We can see it better because we understand that each part has a part to play and each part is vitally important. I remember one of my uh, students in uh, the School of Living Letters just recently put out a post, and she put it in the group chat, and it it went along the lines of the fact that that when we come together like this, we begin to have we we begin to see that if we cannot put in our two bits, we cannot have a part in what's going on, then the whole system itself would fail. Now. Have you ever really seen or heard that before? That place where the expression of what Father has put on the inside of you is peculiar. It's a treasure. It's a it's a, a greater than you could ever imagine. And as a matter of fact, your part to play is equally vitally important as everyone else's part to play. And that's all. That's a lot of what I want to talk about today. You see, the Lord started messing with me about this. Uh, I've been I've been meditating on it a long time about this. I am that I am. It really began the start. The start of this began as I was reading Exodus, and I do the Torah portions every day. And I was reading through Exodus, and something jumped out at me and hit me. And I don't know if you've ever seen this before. I didn't. And I've been reading the scriptures for years. I never saw it quite this way before. In Exodus 6, verses 2 through 9, it begins to say this, And God spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared, listen to this, this is in verse 3 here. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name God Almighty. Now, if we go back to the original Hebrew there, what it says is El Shaddai. So he revealed himself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as El Shaddai. But verse 3 goes on to say, But by my name, yod heh vav -Heh, was I not known to them. You ever seen that before? So in other words, here we see in Scripture itself where there's a change in even the way that Father is revealing himself to his children. And it was different from... Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob until Moshe, because there was this place of of changing, and it, and it's it's a beautiful expression because El Shaddai, of course, as we many of us well know, it means the many breasted one or uh, I am all that you need, and so it's like a it's it's like a place everything that we need we can go to the Father and and it is taken care of, but when we start talking about Yod Hey Vav Hey, Yod Hey Vav Hey is not just plain and simply just the name. There is a meaning and hidden meaning behind the yod heh vav -Heh. And I've taught this before, so if you've ever heard any of my teachings, you've probably heard me say this before. But yod heh vav -Heh is an expression of the Father and us connected together as one. I remember the day that he revealed to me what yod heh vav -Heh was. And what I saw was Father and I, forehead to forehead and nose to nose. As he exhaled, I was inhaling his breath. But as I exhaled... He was inhaling my breath. 
In other words, there was this beautiful exchange of our breath back and forth. And yod heh vav heh is a representation of Father uh, in us and us in him. John 17. Now, I know this didn't come out until much later, but remember, there are many history, mysteries. There are many things hidden inside of the scripture that, that, that we didn't necessarily find until much later, although the New Testament came out and began to reveal a good portion of them. They're, the truth is, is the basis of them are found in the Old Testament as well. And so this yod heh vav heh was this place of John 17, Father, that they may be one just as you and I are one, us in them and them in us. Okay, you all with me so far? And I'm going to read on through the rest of these verses because I think they're key to what we're talking about here. Because right here, Mo, uh, Father is sending Moshe back to, I say Moshe or Moses. Okay, so if you hear me say Moshe, I'm using the Hebrew, his Hebrew name. Sent was sending him back to Egypt to set his people free, to go before Pharaoh and to walk through the process that he did of setting the people free. So verse four, it goes on to say this, and I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein we were, they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant, my covenant with Abraham. Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. He promised four things here. I will bring you out was the first one. And I will rid you of their bondage. There's the second one. And I will redeem you with an outstretched horn. That's the third one. And with great judgments. And the fourth one being, and I will take you for me a people. I will take unto you. You will come unto me as a people. And I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land. Actually, there was five. My apologies. There were five. And that's the fifth one. And I will bring you into the land concerning the which I did swear to, to give into Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And I will give it to you for an inheritance. I am the Lord. And Moses spoke so unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. So they were looking at where they were at that particular moment and was having difficulty being able to see the truth of the promises of what father had already spoken to them. They knew from, they knew from Abraham, they knew from Isaac and Jacob, but there, there had been 400 years, 430 years by the time it was all completed that, that they had been in bondage. So all the only thing they ever really knew was bondage itself. Well, that right there began to stir me up because I was like, wait a minute, God, what you're saying is that you you changed the way that you showed yourself? Because I had always thought that the Lord revealed himself just one way to all of us. And yet here in scripture, I find this place of where he be he's he's begun to change the way he was he was uh interacting with us as sons. And it took me to Exodus three. Now, Exodus three is where we come to the place of where Moshe is standing before the burning bush. And you've got the conversation between him and God. And during this conversation, Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Or in Hebrew, what he said was, Eye Asher Eye. Eye Asher Eye. And there's a, there's a hidden secret here, and I'm going to walk you through that here in just a few minutes. I am that I am. And he said, You shall say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Now it's funny because when we look at the if you're if you're looking in scripture. You know, there are many times where I am is is actually translated in Hebrew a little bit different of a, a little bit different way. A lot of times, with the exception of here, you see the word anoki. Anoki literally means that place of I am, and it's speaking of I being me. So it's a noun, I am. 
I'm declaring something and I'm saying that I am. In this case, eya asher eya is a verb. So it's saying something a little bit different rather than it just being a noun, like a, like a name, like a name of God. Now, one of the uh, one of the kind of unusual things about this is that is that um, it's also a singular name. And I remember when the Lord first began to show me this. I want to walk you through the way that this looks in Hebrew, because I want to show you something that's kind of hidden in there. And it's going to start making a little bit more sense when we talk about it this way. In the Hebrew, you've got Aleph. Aleph. Hey, Yod, hey. There's the Yod, and there's the hey. That makes up the name Ehya. Now, if you notice that there's there's actually some uh, vowel sounds that are hidden directly below there, which are these here. And I'm going to talk about these a little bit. I don't normally teach these except in our, our classes, but it's it's vitally important right now because it begins to open up another aspect of this name. Olive is a letter that represents father. And it's the fullness of Father. It is one. So in when I say Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Echad begins with the living letter Aleph, and it's speaking of the oneness of the Father himself. All right? He is a letter that speaks about breath, and it's, and it's refer referencing this place of framing something. It's funny. I also see this as a pregnancy letter because it's, it's a Dalit. There's your Dalit right here. And a Yod. There's the yod right there. In other words, you've got the door where the baby is being born from. Because the womb of the woman is the door into the earth. So you can see where, there's, where this begins to talk about the, the birthing of something. When I start talking about birthing, I'm reminded of something Apostle Aaron used to teach all the time. And that was that place of tangible evidence. In other words... Father has called us to the place of up here, and he gives us the opportunity to be able to see from in the heavenly places. He takes us on these places where he shows us visions. He takes us through his word, but he begins to expand himself greatly inside of, inside of this place of, of coming up here. We're not looking at the earthly things and what's going on. We're listening to his word, and we're beginning to apply it. But with hey. It takes of that which we receive from the heavenly places and brings it into tangibility of evidence on the earth. You see that? Yod is a letter that speaks about creation. It also speaks about this place of an idea. So uh, the Yod to me is an expression of the light of Father. It's the light of his wisdom. It's the it's this place where he begins to open up through understanding. He be, uh, begins to open up a greater perspective of his of his wisdom. But he speaks about it from that place of it being light itself, or as Teresa Bowen says, the all spark of creation. It's the very yod that he pulled from his heart that he placed into the center of creation. That it, when he spoke to it, it began to expand and it formed the very cosmos that we see around us. Now we have a second hey here. So we begin to see that maybe there's a way we can kind of break this name down a little bit and begin to see something even more. A heavenly perspective, eh, and an earthly perspective, yeah. So it's the word of God going forth into all the earth and not returning back to him void because it's accomplished all that it was intended to accomplish and for the purpose that it was intended to. So we see this beautiful exchange of just like I showed you a little few, a few minutes ago about the yod heh vav -Hey, We see this beautiful exchange of his, of his breath into us and us returning that breath back to him through this. Now, something a little unusual here. In Hebrew, in Hebrew thought, the smaller something is, the greater it is. I'm going to repeat that. The smaller something is, the greater it is. So from a Hebrew perspective, these vowel sounds that are hidden below here, even though they really didn't come about until the time of Ezra, were taught way before this. They were taught by Moses and others 
way before this expression of them being written down in in uh, the Hebrew. So don't think it was just added just because it was added. No, what was taught was the frequency of the sound. In other words, the way that something is pronounced is just as important. Matter of fact, more important than the letter itself. Because when we look at the vowel sounds, they're much smaller than the actual letter themselves. The servant among you, excuse me, the greatest among you is the servant of all. The one that takes the position of the lowliest is the greatest of all. We see through this throughout all of scripture where it talks about this smaller things being that much greater. And when I look at these, these vowel sounds, the first one here is what's known as a sagol. And a sagol is... Uh, actually has an eh sound. That's why I keep saying eh, yeah. It's an eh sound, but the vowel sound itself begins to show something. So the picture of this is a cluster of grapes, and it's a cluster of grapes that are mature. So follow me out here. A cluster of grapes mature. There's another There's another actual vowel sound. It's called a shuruk uh, or kibbutz, one of the two. They're, they're, the names are exchanged. Uh that actually is a representation of uh, of new grapes or unripened grapes. This picture is a picture of ripened grapes. So it begins to speak about this place of maturity. But more than that, the Hebrew word sagol is actually connected to another Hebrew word, and it's a part of, matter of fact, it's a, a part of the Hebrew word segula. Now, I know some of you may be like, Segula, okay, what is what is that? Exodus 19, um, verse 5 says this, Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure. Segula, peculiar treasure, is the, is the definition for the Hebrew word segula there. Unto me above all the people, for all the earth is mine. Now, that kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it, to 1 Peter 2, verse 9, where it said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a segula, a peculiar treasure, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called, who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That makes sense? So this first letter begins to open up and tells us almost immediately, there's a peculiar treasure hidden here. I want to show you something. I want to show you something that's hidden. This next vowel sound that's right next to it is called a shva. A shva is actually two dots or two yodes that are one on top of another. And I don't have time to go into the full expression of these. But a shiva is usually a place where in Hebrew, it says pause and wait. Y'all remember in he, in Psalms where we get the uh, term selah? Selah is another expression, a very different and very beautiful expression because it's it's expressing this from a different way. But it says pause, wait, stop, think about it. And that's exactly what this vowel sound is also doing. And so it's usually not so much of a sound as it is a shortened sound. So eh, it's got that shortened H sound there. But it says stop and pause and think about this. And what is it talking? It's talking about the Aleph and the hay. Where is this coming from? Who is making us a peculiar treasure? Well, you are, Father. You have framed us into a peculiar treasure. You have made us into who you've made us to be. And you have made us unique. You have made us important. I hear Holy Spirit taking me to the place of, let me prove that one step further. Inside of your body, we have a multiplicity of cells, right? Matter of fact, some cells are skin cells, some cells are heart cells, some cells are, are cells that run around in our blood. We've got them all the way from our toes, all the way to the top of our head, even our hair, well, or the lack thereof, uh, even our hair is, uh, is has got cells in it. So we have this place where each cell has a particular job that it needs to do. And even the multiplicity of the same type of cells don't always do the same thing. 
They may be helping or assisting or may be kind of doing different parts in different times, depending upon what's going on. And so one may be actively doing something. Another one may be resting another. So it's, it's, it's a lot of things that are going on, but every cell does something in the body. And if in, any one cell stops doing what it's intended to do, or if any one cell chooses to do something different from what it was intended to do, I, 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 I almost, I, I say this with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The only way that I've been able to define that, and I used to use this same, the same uh, analogy when I was working in the hospital, I, I was in the medical field for 22 years. And I remember, I remember the, um, the time that I would be talking to folks. And one of the ways that I would describe what cancer is, is as a cell that chooses to be something other than what it was intended to be. And it begins, it forms a cancer. So I don't want to get wrapped up into that aspect of it. I'm just showing you how important each cell is and how each cell in the place of what Father has called us to be has given us a peculiar treasure that he wants us to share. You remember that statement I gave you earlier? If I can't put my two bits in, then I feel like the whole system would fail because there's something that I have that is important. You following me? And so the yeah of a eh, yeah begins to speak like just that, because just as the yod is an expression of the light of father, have you ever had those godly ideas that all of a sudden just pop up in your mind? And you're like, well, I hadn't even thought of it. I never thought about that. Do you realize that that is a, an idea straight from the throne of God, straight from the heart of father? And he's given it to you and says, hey, do something with it. Hence the hey behind that. He's saying, frame it, speak it, begin to do something with what I've given you because I've given you an idea. You have, I've given you a treasure that I want you to do something with, right? When I look at this as a whole, eh, yeah, is was translated as I am. A share is that, and then of course, a eh, yeah, is I am. Now I'm going to come back to this here in just a little bit. But first, I want to kind of, I want to kind of take what I've taken so far and begin to open up another aspect of this. As I was meditating on this, the Lord took me to this. I was, matter of fact, it was kind of kind of crazy because uh, two nights ago, not last night, but the night before, I I went to lay down and go to bed, and as I did, there was this this excitement on the inside of me. And it was almost like the entire my entire body was buzzing. My, I was tired, and I could easily have gone to sleep, but yet I, there was a part of me that was excited, and there was a there was a place of an exchange, and I, there were some things floating around. I was meditating on what we were going to be talking about today, and as I was doing that, I began to think about something that the Lord shared with me quite some time ago. And I want I want you to hear me out. So I'm going to rattle you a good bit today. You guys good with that? Is it all right if I rattle you, but is it all right if I take you a little bit deep? All right, good. Are, is everybody with me so far? Or do do I need to explain anything? Everybody good? Everybody's good. Okay. But uh, I remember when the Lord shared with me, this with me, it really began to open something up in me. And that was this. He he. I asked him a question because it was something I was meditating on. If there is a God-shaped hole inside of me that only you can fill. I remember hearing that since I was a little kid. You know, where where my parents and other people in the church would say, there's a God-shaped hole inside of you that only he can fill. But I asked him a question, Lord. I said, Lord, if there is a God-shaped hole inside of me that only you can fill, is there a man-shaped hole inside of you that only we can fill? Shva, Selah whatever you want to say, pause and think about it. Now, I'm not asking you to believe this is doctrine or theology or anything like, anything like that, but think about what it suddenly begins to open up. Wait a minute. Are you trying to say 
that we are that important to God that he created a space inside of himself for us to fill? Actually, the truth is that, and I believe the answer is in, in the Hebraic understanding of creation, Zim Zoom, the name of our ministry. And I named it partly because of this. It's another. There's another part of, of Zim Zoom that, that I, I uh, is the re- another part of the reason why I felt like the Lord said for us to call our ministry Zim Zoom. But Zim Zoom is a, is a description of creation. And in this, what the Lord did was he, exp- he constricted himself. In other words, he opened up a space inside of himself where he plucked the yod out of his heart, the, the, the photon. He plucked the yod out of his heart, placed it into the center of the expanse that he had just created inside of himself. And with the power of his word and the wind of his breath, he spoke to that little spark and it began to fill up. I mentioned it earlier when I began to talk about the filling up of creation. In other words, God created a hole inside of himself where creation itself could be filled. There's a man-shaped hole inside of God that he is calling us to fill. Now, I know that may rattle you some uh, somewhat, but stop and think about it when you begin to think about, Father, that they may be one just as you and I are one, us in them and them in us us john 17 i'm not going outside of the word i'm i'm just taking the word and looking at it from a a, a little bit different from perspective but how important does that make us to god if he created a space inside of himself where he said and he called us to that place of filling that space inside of us to me it i realized how important that made me, number one. But there was a spirit of the fear of the Lord that came on this so heavy that I began to realize that way that I see Father and the way that I respond to his word is how I understand the the coming together of both of these seemingly opposite things. Because it goes, it kind of go to me. It goes against the ways that we'd always believe things. That 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 that. How could God ever have a place of wanting something? But what if He chose to? What if He chose to create the space because He wanted us to fill that space? He made room for us, if you will, and then He brought us into Himself, and He made us one with Him. So that we are one in him, just as he is one in us. So when I begin to look at it based on this argument, based on this place of of seeing it this way, there's another way that eya asher eya can actually be translated. It's not just I am that I am. It can also be I will be what I will be. Because it's a verb. And being is definitely a verb. Remember, I told you this statement is a verb, not a noun. But the Lord took that one step further. This is the part that that I've actually I've actually kind of struggled with over the last couple of days. This is the this is the first time that I've released this aspect of of this particular phrase. It's something that I've been meditating on for a long time, but I'm I'm expressing now to you guys. And, And there's a part of it that kind of scares me a little bit. In, in this, but it's a spirit of the fear of the Lord. It's not that I feel like I'm wrong because I know I'm, I know, I know inside of me, I've learned to trust, even if sometimes I can't quite put it together in a scripture just yet. There's something on the inside of me. I've learned to trust the place of the word. I've learned to trust the word of God in my life. And I've, I've learned to trust his words because there have been things that I've the Lord's taught told me years ago that I am just now coming to the place of being able to explain and explain it through scripture. But the truth is, is that he did the same thing here. Cause I, I'm but I'm gonna open up something up and it might rattle you a little bit when I say it. What he began to show me out of this was was this: I am whatever I am, I am that I am. 
that I am says that I am. No, let me rephrase that. I will be whatever I will be through you. Let me rephrase that one more time. I am whatever I choose to be, but the way that you see me will be the way that I reveal myself to you. And I will always show you more. And I know that's that's the one that I figured you guys were going to go, ooh, wait a minute. So, so what you're saying is the way that I see something will be the way that the Lord will be able to respond to me? Let's go back to that scripture that I read earlier. Exodus 6, verse 9. And Moses spoke unto the children of Israel, but they hearkened not unto Moses for anguish of spirit and for cruel bondage. So, so the Lord began to express to them in this way of showing them who he really is. And he began to walk them through the 10 plagues and he protected them during that time. He began to show them the, the heart of who he was and they saw the great miracles of God. But even after they left Egypt and they were on the way, there were times that they complained it really wasn't until the Sea of Reeds, or what we like to call the Red Sea, that on the other side of that, they'd be, oh, wait a minute. We see the greatness of God now. But God was trying to express the deepness of their heart from where they were at that time. For me, when I began to see this from this perspective, the spirit of the fear of the Lord came on me so strong because I realized, what do I see of you, Father, and how do I see you? Do I see you as a great big God up, up in the heavens, and I'm way down here on the earth, and we're separated by billions and billions of miles, but somehow you have the ability of every time I do something wrong to smack me or pop me or cause me some sort of pain or harm or, or whatever because I've done something wrong and you're a judgmental God and you're, you're going to judge everything that I do the moment that I do it? Or do I see you as a loving father that even when I mess up, yeah, there might be a little bit of something, there might be a punishment that I'm going to have to walk through, but you're going to carry me through that inside of your loving arms, just like he does, like we do with our children. Stop and think for just a minute of our children and how we respond to our children. When we love our children, what do we do? Yes, yeah, sometimes we got to go in and do the pop-up. You know, we may have to put them on restriction. We may have to, to, to do something that says, hey, wait a minute, you can't do, because we 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 know we've been down these paths before and we've seen how how this can lead to something that can harm you or hurt you and i love you and i want to protect you i want to put my arms around you and when i put my arms around you it may seem a little bit restrictive see that's where the living letter chet comes in because it speaks about that place of a fence or a boundary but it's the loving arms of the father that wraps us round about and says i want to hold you in this place because I don't want you to hurt yourself. I don't want to, to cause something where that you begin to walk away from me and you don't see the love that I have for you. Because no matter whether you walk away from me or whether you're here with me sitting in my lap, I'm still going to love you with the same love that I do while you're sitting right here in my lap. But the problem is that sometimes we don't see that. We've been through difficulty. We've been through the, these places where we've had challenge after challenge after challenge and difficulty after difficulty, sickness after sickness, poverty after poverty, or even just financial problems or whatever. Fill in the blank. I don't want to keep going with that because I don't want you to, to hold me to any one of the things that I just said because it's irrelevant. Fill in the blank with whatever Holy Spirit puts in your heart right here and right now. And he's saying, I love you. I want to wrap you around. So I am whatever I am by the way that you see that I am. Because it's that way that I can be able to speak to you and show you who I truly am. And truthfully, 
This is where the other part of ZimZoom, and this is part of the reason why we named our ministry ZimZoom. ZimZoom has another expression, and it's if a professor is wanting to teach a student something that the student has absolutely no concept about, what he's going to do is he's going to step out of himself, step out of all the knowledge that he has and all the wisdom that he has, step or she, take your pick, he or she, I'm using that as a general, um, and he puts himself into the eyes of the student that he's trying to, to talk to. And as he does, he looks through their eyes, begins to see into their world, finds something in their world that applies to what he's talking about, and then begins to talk to the student based on something that they do understand. You see, Father did the same thing to us by giving us the Scripture. The Torah itself is, is a picture of where God stepped out of the wisdom of himself, stepped into our eyes, stepped and looked through our eyes, and began to show us throughout all of creation the depth of who he is. And even that doesn't scratch the surface. You're right. It doesn't. But that's how he began to reveal to himself who we really are. Matter of fact, one step further was he actually gave us his light. Each and every one of us in the entire world contain a portion of his light. That is the facet of who the Father has made me to be. That's the expression of his, of his spirit that he gave to each and every one of us. Scripture actually calls it a measure of faith. Selah, for just a minute. And he has given each one of us a measure of faith. The problem hasn't been about when it deals with faith. The problem hasn't been whether or not we have the faith or not. It's the way that we see that faith. I remember the day that the Lord showed me, and we began to talk about faith, and he reminded me of the living letter Yod. Even, it's, even though it's the smallest amongst all of the letters, remember the smaller something is, the greater it is? that he began to open up, and I realized, wait a minute. Oh, my goodness. If the little tiny yod that he pulled out of his heart, placed into the center of creation, spoke to it by his word and by the wind of his breath, and it began to expand and form everything in the cosmos that we see right now, and those things that we do not see, then why am I looking at a mustard seed of faith as if I need more mustard seeds? It's like, Lord, you gave me everything I needed from the beginning. That one little seed contained all that you had ever given me. All and more than I could ever imagine inside of that all. God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All things, not part things, all things. Are you with me? And he gave it to us in that measure of faith. The problem wasn't that we didn't already have it. The problem was that we didn't see it that way. You following me? Now, I know some of you may be like, okay, this 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 is good, but I, I don't I don't see how this actually connects to scripture. I mean, I brought it out of the scripture and I brought it out of this eh yeah, share eh yeah, but but how does this really truly fit all together? Mark 8, verses 27 through 29. Then Jesus and his disciples walked to the villages near Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he posed this question to his disciples. Who do the people say that I am? They replied, some say John the baptizer, others say Elijah the prophet, and still others say you must be one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter immediately spoke up and said, you are Mashiach, you are the Messiah, the Son of of the living God for flesh and blood has not revealed to you revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven 
Therefore, your name is Peter. And upon this rock of revelation, this rock of seeing, this, this place of seeing, see the Hebrew word for seeing is ra'ah, and it's resh aleph hey. But that resh aleph hey isn't just plain and simply the visualizing of something. It means to see and to know something intimately. Remember, if hey is a pregnancy letter, it's bringing about the birth of something. There has to be intimacy before there's pregnancy, right? And the intimacy of the Lord with us as he brings forth his word into the earth. My word goes forth into all the earth, right? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. I don't know if you, if you guys can feel this or not, but I'm I'm sensing. Well, no, I just I not only do I feel the glory of God, but I'm 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 feeling the spirit of the fear of the Lord on this as well. Father is calling us to this place of of looking inside of ourselves. The kingdom of God is at hand. Why? Because the kingdom of God is right here inside of me. My secret place. I remember the day that the Lord took me into the secret place. And, and I told him, I said, Lord, I don't want to leave this place. I want to stay with you. Let me call in sick to work so that I could spend the rest of the afternoon here with you. Man, was that short-sighted. That was super short-sighted. But what actually came out of my mouth wasn't those words. That's just what I was thinking. What came out of my mouth was, Father, I never want to leave this place. And he looked at me and he said, you don't have to because this place is inside of you. And I recognized from that point on, I never had to leave the secret place. And I haven't. I, I, I began to, I, it, it began to, the verse that was so, uh, so enigmatic or or I was so puzzling to me for years suddenly made sense. And the kingdom of God suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. I began to realize what he was telling me was this place of, I have given you the place of his secret place and it's right here inside of you. Now hold on and don't let go. Because I want to show you, I want to show you this place where you can operate from this place of always being in my secret place, from looking into the place of the heavenlies to, to see from up here while your feet are still attached to the earth. You see, the truth is, is that's a beautiful expression and a beautiful a, a picture of the living letter Vav. Living letter Vav is, is a yod that extends down to the earth and it touches the earth itself. So our, our head in the place of the heavenlies and seeing from the heavenlies while our feet are here on the earth. Why? Because this is where the straight light of Father, the light of Father comes directly down into the earth and there's the expression of bringing heaven to earth. We're not trying to go to heaven. Father has been from the very beginning saying, I want to bring heaven to earth. And I'm doing it through each and every one of you. Paul talked about it because he said the very light inside of you that has been made the temple of God and you're being built into a temple of God. That we are each bricks being built together into the temple. What temple is he talking about? Talking about the new Jerusalem. He's talking about us. He's talking about that place of where we become that new Jerusalem. It's not a building that we're waiting that comes down from heaven. He's saying that we are that new Jerusalem. I know some of you may be like, oh, wait a minute. That, that doesn't. Well, I want to challenge you with this. This is something I discovered not too terribly long ago. Again, this is kind of deep. It's kind of deep. But I was reading in the Zohar, and I'm going over the. If I would, if I, if I was, I'm Jewish. I do have a little bit of Jewish blood in me, but I was never born and raised Jewish. So uh, I was born and raised in the Christian church, and so on. I just discovered a few years ago that we had Jewish blood, and I've I've chosen to honor that expression of that. 
That doesn't matter. And I, 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 I'm very careful about saying that. And when I say, because, because we are Israel together. All right. Just because I have a little bit of Jewish blood in me, that is irrelevant. We are Israel together. And we are all spiritual Jews from that, from that place. But I, I remember in that place where I began to honor that, um, the Torah portion that would have been my bar mitzvah is called Pinchas or Phineas. And the, there's a story of Phineas, and I want to get into it right now. Uh, but I was reading that that particular chapter or that particular book, and I came upon this place where there was a conversation between a rabbi and somebody who was coming against the rabbi. But it said something that really shook me, and I realized that it was right. Because it was looking at, this is a deep mystical and, and mysterious, or uh, this is where some of the mysteries are found in this, in this book. And it said that the scripture never mentions a third temple. And I was like, now we've always equated the New Jerusalem with the third temple. But it never actually speaks about a third temple itself. It does mention the first and the second. And the buildings of the first and the second temple. Now, I saw some of you may be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about the New Jerusalem? Isn't that supposed to be the third temple? You're exactly right. Because what the what the scripture, what it was going on to say was that this, that we were the temple of God. The third temple, if you will, was meant to be us. God making his kingdom inside of us. God living with men, which is, you know, we, we've heard this before. But we're seeing it from a whole nother perspective. I'm just bringing in the whole idea where we're not waiting for a new Jerusalem to come down. We are the new Jerusalem. We are right now the new Jerusalem. Now, I wasn't planning on talking about this, but let me go a little bit further with it. All right. Because he's saying, eh, yeah, I share, eh, yeah, I will be whatever I will be. How do you see yourself? How do you see you? How do you see me in you? Because the way you see me in you will be the way that I respond to you. Father, I see you as my loving God. I see you as my father. I see you as and I as one, just as Yeshua himself declared when, when, Father, that they may be one just as you and I are one. My heart, Father, is that I, just like Yeshua, do what I see my father do. I say what I hear my father say. We're not waiting for this. Help me out, Lord. Help me out. Suddenly a verse that always caused puzzling in me for many, many years made sense. The eschatology of the way that, that I was taught for so long was this place of, you know, the... Uh, uh, Jesus coming back, and that the, there was Armageddon, and the good would fight against evil, and that uh, there would be a thousand years of, of peace, and then the devil was going to be set loose again, and blah, 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 blah. And then we come all the way to Revelations chapter 22. And in Revelations 22, it says this. Now, I'm going to shake you a little bit. Some of you may have seen this already. Some of you may not have. But let me kind of, it shook me when I first saw it, because I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense, Lord. There's got to be something a little bit different than what you're saying here, based on this. Revelations 22, verse 12. So we're about halfway through the chapter. We're only, and I'll finish up just a few verses before the finishing of Revelations chapter 22. Revelations 22 is the last chapter. This is the finality of all of that, at least by the way that we've been taught. Listen to this. Verse 12, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am the, well, in here, because it was written in Greek, it says Alpha and Omega. Um, Omega. What he said was, I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the finishing, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. He's talking about the New Jerusalem. Look at verse 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and makes a lie. And I'm like, 
wait a minute. How can there be dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, more murderers, idolaters, and whoever makes and loves a lie outside of this place where the way I'd always been taught said all of them would be gone anyway? There has to be something more here because that scripture, that verse wouldn't be there if that was the case. But stop and think about it. Eya asher eya. I will be what I will be through you. You are the new Jerusalem, and the new Jerusalem is now. It is in us, right here, right now. I, 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 I listen. I agree that we are just now beginning to realize the depth of who we are in him and who he is in us. So we're still only scratching the surface. But the truth is, is that the light that is in us is just like a city that's been set up on a hill that cannot be hidden. And those that are seeing the light are coming unto that light. Now, I know you'll be like, wait a minute. You're saying the new Jerusalem is right now? I'm actually saying the new Jerusalem has been around for 2,000 years. It's always been in us. Father set his abode inside of us, but we were wrapped up in bondage. We were wrapped up in the ways that we had always been taught things. We didn't really choose to see beyond for a long time. And the Lord's began to say, oh, and, and, and we have begun to say, wait a minute, there's got to be more than the way that I've always learned this. There's got to be something else other than the way that I've always been taught. Father, I want you to teach me. I remember the day that the Lord did just that. I remember going in and I was up in the secret place. I was with him. And he said, Daniel, I want you to forget everything that anybody has ever told you about me. He said, because I want to teach you. And he's saying that to you. I want to teach you. I want to teach you that expression of who I am in you. Because the part that you have to play is important. And if you don't add that part, the whole system will fail. That's how important you are. You see the heart behind what this is saying? I don't care whether you believe my, my the ways that I'm seeing this or not. Listen to what it means. It is saying this to each and every one of us. You are that important to Father. See who you are and how important the expression of what Father has placed inside of you is. Because until your two bits get added to this, until your part gets added to this, we're still not whole yet. Do you see that? Just, just that thought alone changes me forever. Not only from the perspective of myself, but then how do I see you? If I realize that you have a part to add to what the Father has given me, don't you think that suddenly I would begin to see a greater value in you? Absolutely. Each one of us are valuable. I teach this through what's called the diamond of Yahweh. I've got it on YouTube if you want to go back and watch that. But this, this is another uh, analogy or beautiful expression of where the Lord taught me and showed me how important each and every one of us are. As a matter of fact, it went to this point of, of, of saying this. If God is in me, just as God is in you, when I approach you, should I not approach you with the same honor and respect and awe and fear of the Lord as I would stand before God Almighty himself? How does that change us when we speak that kind of honor, when we see that kind of honor inside of each other? Now, Thank you, Father, 
that you have made us to be one with you. Father, I see and I recognize the you that is in each and every one of the people that is here, the you that is in each and every one of those that will listen to this recording. Father, we choose to look a different way. We choose to see beyond the ways that we've always seen things, to see the deeper expression of what you have made us to be and what you have made those that are, that are around us to be. That, Father, we are that light. We are that city, that new Jerusalem that sits upon the hill that cannot be hidden. If we can see it, it's right here, right now. If we can see it, will they be a greater expression of this? Absolutely. But just as Paul said, when I see that we are building, no, Peter, excuse me, this was Peter that said this, that we are lively stones that are put together into the temple of God, when I recognize that and recognize how each, each part comes to play. And like Paul said, when he said that each one of us are a part of the body and that every joint supplies, that Father, you're calling your people to this place of being echad, of being one. Shema Yisrael, we are Yisrael. Hear, O Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, the Lord our God, Adonai Echad, the Lord is one. Now, I know some of you may have some questions, but I feel the Lord saying, stop right there. Just as I've been speaking, and Gabriel, with your permission, if anyone has anything that they want to um, share with this, I would love for you to to share with us. Now, more than likely, this won't be in the recording that I'll be I'll be putting into on um, uh, YouTube. But um, I still, matter of fact, we can go ahead and stop the recording now if we want to. So that way, there's there's not any of this added. That gives you the opportunity to be able to share and not have to worry about it going out to the rest of the world or anything like that. But I want to give you the opportunity to be able to do just that. Is that good? Is that all right? Yes, okay. yes, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Anybody have any questions? I threw a lot at you. We went pretty deep. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> 